On a PCC Extra, Josh and I talk about the future of Metroid and our full conversation about characters we'd like to see in Mortal Kombat 11 as we once again delve back into the pop culture cosmos. Welcome to the pop culture cosmos. And we're back. This is the Pop Culture Cosmos. It's Gerald coming right back at you here. If you need a listing of where we're at, because we're being played on radio all around the world, seven days a week, check us out, Pop Culture Cosmos, on Facebook. You'll see a listing of all the different radio stations and the days and times that we're on. And if you want to hear us on our podcast networks like Podbean, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and so much more, it has a listing of many of those podcasting options as well. My friend, you've got a great thing going on with Humanica Media, so share the goods, my friend. What's up with Humanica Media? Put on a new episode of Topic Apocalypse, talking about technology, and Brian Kane wanted to talk about CES, so that's something right off your alley, man. But uh, yeah, we're you, and you didn't have me on, man. Bummer. I mean, uh, this was before. Um, actually, I don't. I just didn't think about. It. I'm sorry. <laughs> but no, we talked about robots and TVs and all kinds of interesting things, and of course. Denial, so-called nice guy, brings up sex robots, as he always does. But it's up there now. If you want to listen to it, check it out on Podbean, iTunes, and all the usual places. And also, they're on every Tuesday night on the Podcast Radio Network. My friend, we were talking on Friday's episode of the PCC Multiverse about some of the things that were going on with Nintendo and what type of characters that they had to reach into that could actually provide good games for the Nintendo Switch. Did you hear the news about Metroid Prime 4, something that Nintendo did have in development, but it was at the point where it was just not going to be a quality release, so they're redoing it again from scratch with another studio actually stepping in to make it. Nintendo actually had the foresight to say, hey, this game looks like it was going to stink. It wasn't going to be able to be a good game for the Nintendo Switch, but at least at this point, we're going to go ahead and redo it and see if we can bring out something that's quality that actually might garner some interest back into the Metroid Prime series coming up a little bit later than a lot of people were expecting. Yeah, they they must have been listening to the show, man. Uh, it happened as soon as the episode dropped. <laughs> Doesn't it always? It does. It does. We are the leaders of information dispersal in pop culture, just so everyone out there knows. The it, It's cool. I'm glad they have that level of quality control. But, um, you know, again, that's going to be, if they're starting from scratch, it's going to be at least three years until we see that game. So... Whatever predictions we had of that game coming out next year are now gone. So I love it. I hope that it's good. I hope I would, you know, like I said last time, I would like a reboot of the the franchise and maybe a more emotional storyline. You know, Nintendo does what Nintendo does and everything they touch turns the money anyways. So who knows? Not always. And some of that has been in the Metroid universe. And we talked about that on the PCC Multiverse about how the Metroid series is a series that is beloved by a hardcore few, but not always commercially successful. And you know what? Give Nintendo some great kudos for seeing what this product was going to become and, you know, putting the, the kibosh on it, the halt on it and saying, you know what? This is not a game that we want to go ahead and release maybe this year or next year. We want to go ahead and make some major changes and just start from scratch. So they went ahead and said, you know what? We're going to give this game the development of it to U.S.-based retro studios. And they're just going to go ahead and start it up from there. So, yes, like you said, it probably won't be now another three, four years on it. Probably may not even be on the Nintendo Switch by the time it finally comes out. But for at least it's a smart move. And we don't see this every day from developers, from publishers, or even from big name companies like the big three, Microsoft, Sony, or Nintendo, where they just say, you know what, we're going to cut our losses and we're going to redo it from scratch. They usually say, you know what, if this is a turkey, then we're going to either release it or just cut it off entirely. We rarely see them go ahead and just say, you know what, we're going to wipe the slate clean and do it all over again. Yeah, but that also makes me wonder, are we ever going to see a reboot from Nintendo? A reboot in what fashion? 
just something that starts from scratch because everything that they have come out with is always connected to whatever came before it so i'm and, and this will be a metroid prime 4 so yeah it, it yeah. will not be its own entity it'll be just, just part like you said of a, of a f- existing franchise but i think what this shows though is that or i don't know if it necessarily shows it but i think that there's some things where franchises don't necessarily stand the test of time you know consecutive releases is, is important but like i like what zelda does where each entry is its own thing because it's easier to follow but you have kids like you want to show them mario you're gonna have to go back and show them all the marios from the beginning in order for them to fully understand the legacy of that mario so i i'm i wonder if nintendo will ever be in the business of rebooting something from scratch and what that would look like like you said they're very hesitant to go ahead and produce original ips splatoon is the last one i could think of that's really done them well over the past what five ten years that has really done them well. That is an original IP that I can think of. I don't think of, is there any others off the top of your head that's not a Mario, Donkey Kong, Zelda, or any familiar character related that's just, like I said, an original IP from scratch that's not Splatoon? I honestly cannot. You know, I, I they have had other uh, other entries in, in big series. Xenoblade Chronicles is one. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles is another. But those have all been attached to bigger franchises already they've just been standalone stories so i can't with the exception of splatoon and i guess arms is that the one where you did or yeah but that's nintendo arms but i don't think that really scored that high with audiences yeah yeah so i I, you know there's there's not a lot of examples of them doing that so uh, i i think metroid will be the true test though like if this one doesn't sell that well then maybe they'll rethink their strategy moving forward with that franchise maybe they will reboot it who knows and I will probably get the comment that, hey, you know what? Don't forget about the sequel to one of their most popular games of this generation in 1, 2, 3, 4 Switch instead of 1, 2, 3 Switch. That's an original IP. We all just want more scissor clips. Come on. No, that's true. That's true. Now, that actually was a very cool game to play. And I know that's still a somewhat of a favorite on the Nintendo Switch. And people do get a Nintendo Switch. That's probably one of the first low-budget games that I would have them go out and get because that's a lot of fun to play. All right, my friend, before we head on out, we got to talk some Mortal Kombat 11. <laughs> Jamie Monroy from GameSource coming up again. He actually dropped on the GameSource Facebook page, which you can check out at any point in time, something that actually went kind of viral from our location, an article from comicbook.com talking about a movement for Shaggy, Shaggy from the Scooby-Doo franchise getting him into as a dlc character for mortal kombat 11 your thoughts on shaggy possibly becoming that and do you think it's actually even feasible for him to be a part of mortal kombat 11 zoinks (laughs) okay so let me let me explain the uh the backstory behind this whole shaggy thing there's a meme. Okay, I don't understand meme culture very well. There's there was like moth memes and there's uh, you and I both, man. This is why memes, I don't do memes. Right. I, I don't do any of that stuff. There's I don't like. A, there's a whole new like meme movement featuring Shaggy. So I I just saw this yesterday. Someone had created a bunch of memes where like they're talking about how the cast was afraid to work with Sh- with um Shaggy on the set of Scooby Doo because he was when he possessed the power of Shaggy. They can only be in the room with them for like two seconds or else they would literally explode. And they're like, they had to CG Scooby because all the none, all the dogs, the real ones, sensed his power and were too scared to come near him. So there's this whole meme thing going on. And I, I didn't know that that was like going to explode into something big. It was I chuckled at it. But I, other than that, I was like, eh, it's kind of stupid. So I, I clicked on. But then lo and behold, I get on the Internet today and Shaggy's everywhere. Why? I want to understand the trends. Why does this happen? I don't know. People just pick these abstract things, and Shaggy is a character from... You know how old he is? The first episode that aired, I think, was when I was born. To give you an idea how long ago that took place. And Shaggy, as funny as he is, as cool he is as he is, as as an awesome a cartoon character that he has in his place in history and all that being the second banana to Scooby getting all the love and all that. 
And I like Shaggy personally above every, anything else when it comes to the Scooby-Doo franchise. And those original Scooby-Doo cartoons, the original ones, not the stuff afterwards, were really good. But you know what? The, the internet is the internet. They just fixate on one thing. They'll throw something abstract out there and they go for it. What has happened since is that there's been an online petition to get Shaggy into Mortal Kombat 11. First of all, whoever owns the rights for Shaggy is not going to want to put Shaggy into Mortal Kombat 11 and have him put into a situation where his eyeballs get ripped out or he gets impaled or he has something go through his head or has his heart ripped out or his face ripped off or anything else that could possibly happen in a fatality in Mortal Kombat 11. So your thoughts on the possibility of Shaggy ever being in Mortal Kombat 11. Would you like to see it, or do you think it's actually even feasible? It's not feasible, and I don't want to see it. This is like that whole stupid thing with what Knuckles last year, when they were like, I will show you the way. Like, that was stupid, and that should not have lasted as long as it did. And there's no way, because Cartoon Network right now owns the rights to Scooby-Doo, and there's no way, because that's one of their biggest kids' shows, there's no way that they're going to let Mortal Kombat have that have Shaggy in any form because that's going to be a loss of Scooby-Doo viewers for them because parents are going to be watching it like, oh, this is violent. I don't want my kid, you know, being around Shaggy. It's 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 a Deadpool thing, you know. The the Deadpool's funny in the cartoons and the Spider-Man crossovers, but then when uh, the curiosity peaked and kids wanted to see him in another form, the uh, the parents were horrified. So that leads me to a new set of questions here when it comes to the Mortal Kombat 11 game coming up. They're obviously going to have a roster full of great characters from the original Mortal Kombat series and also subsequent iterations of it. Your thoughts on different characters coming that you would love to see added as DLC. I know you got three in mind. I'll let you go first. What are the three characters you'd like to see appear in Mortal Kombat 11? I want to say Isaac from Dead Space is my first one. You know, you you throw him in his, his space armor, you give him the little like uh giant laser staple gun and let him have his his telekinesis, like he could stand on his own in there. And the blood, we've all seen Isaac getting ripped to pieces anyways from the Dead Space games for those of us who aren't that good at him but still like to play them. So I could totally see that happening. And it's a very he's a very visceral character. The game is very visceral. Oh, uh, visceral, there you go. Know, visceral that, that Studios. That funny right there, and they're closed down. They got to experience the fatality given to them by EA too soon but i would love to see <laughs> isaac in that game because it, it just it it seems like it would mesh well does that you know and also he hasn't been around in a while and maybe actually would spark interest for not only him and the series but it just seems like a character that's dormant right now that would be a great fit for mortal kombat 11 yeah exactly i couldn't agree more and uh, my next one is conan the barbarian especially with with conan what's the there's a new conan game coming out that's one of the most anticipated games of 2019 not Conan um, Exiles, that's for sure. Conan that was Exiles. awful. Yeah, geez, the dong slider. But Conan it would be a good property because he, it's dark, you know? It's dark and it's violent. He's a very broody character. I think he could fit into the Mortal Kombat world perfectly. And that's just uh, even with his history, not just his history in video games, but just who he is in the, the novels written by Robert E. Howard. That's just how he's always been. I think he'd fit perfectly into that world. Okay, my last one's a wild card here. I'm going to say Claptrap because claptrap is he's so used to living in a world of violence and destruction and can you imagine how good his fatalities would be like just the stuff that they could make him say it would be hilarious and it's it's funny because he he is he is in essence a very dark character he's like a he's he's a dark comedy on wheels but the only thing the fatalities on him or him would not be as as fun to watch or also any type of action because not only if you've seen if you've seen the footage from Mortal Kombat 11 already and some of the fights that that I've seen actually during the course of the match itself bones breaking impalements things of that nature that are not fatalities are still included in the game during the course of the fight that I don't think would be repeated very well if Claptrap was a character on that end of the scale Obviously, in what you're talking about, as far as giving the fatalities, yes, and the one-liners he'd give, that would be awesome. But I think it would also it has to go both ways as far as can claptrap be something that is is actually visually attractive when he's taking damage as well. 
Yeah, that that's true. And, uh, you know, I could see him, like, uh, was that scene in Borderlands 2 where he gets his eye ripped out by the thing? Like, I could see him having... it. it granted, it wouldn't be bloody because he's a robot, but, like, they can rip it, his arms off and sparks would come out. And he could even make jokes as he's dying, too. Like, when he always goes, oh, goodbye, cruel world. Like, that could be funny, too. And, uh, you know, I'm not necessarily saying this will ever happen. It probably will never happen. But it, it's just a funny thought to, to think about. It'd be cool to see that that juxtaposition. You're listening to the Pop Culture Cosmos. Looking for an edge the next time you take on your favorite video game? Then check out Vitabrace High Performance Gamer Wristbands. Packed with the power of fruit seed oil, Vitabrace is clinically proven to help improve performance, giving you a better gaming experience. Head to MiracleFruitOil.com and use the promo code MEDIA10 to get $10 off your Vitabrace purchase. Whether you're looking to beat the time on your latest speed run or are fighting your way to the top on your favorite multiplayer or battle royale, Vitabrace can help you reach your gaming goals. Buy Vitabrace today at MiracleFruitOil.com. That's MiracleFruitOil.com. Vitabrace. Win with it. I've got three I'm thinking of as well. I think first off, something that you would like, and I know that because it's a series that you're really fond of, the alien xenomorph being one of the characters that would be part of it. I think that would be awesome. I know people would probably say the Predator and all that. And yeah, that would be a natural as well. But I think alien xenomorph being on a ship as far as the level is concerned and, and then you're going ahead and seeing the fatalities. But also when you're going ahead and performing moves on the alien xenomorph the green blood the acid blood coming out and all that yeah that would be that would be great and you said it yourself a fatality with the chest burster would be just truly awesome was that your left field card i love it man that's that's awesome that'd be so cool to see i guess it would depend on which one it is but like it would be cool to see the chest burster and then um you know maybe one one of the fatalities could be them like summoning one of the other three and they just jump off the screen and rip the other guy to shreds and run off. That'd be cool. I, I or, dig or it. one of the special moves could be the little ones coming after and just right to the other guy's face. I would hope that they would have a soundbite in there that has Bill Paxson going, we're screwed, man. We're screwed. Exactly, exactly. So that would actually be my first choice as far as Alien Xenomorph. Yes, Predator would also be something that's interesting. But we've, I think I've seen, has a Predator been part of a fighting game before? I don't remember. I know they had the that top down strategy game on Xbox. That was pretty fun. Could have sworn Predator was a was, a, was already in a fighting game, but if not, Predator would be, be would be a great match as well. But I think for my second choice, I want to go with Big Daddy from Bioshock because he's got that drill motion right there on his right arm that could really just do some heavy damage. Now, sustaining damage, that would still, like Claptrap, be an issue where is it, can you make it be an issue where can you make it visually enticing enough to be somewhat entertaining? But obviously, from an offensive standpoint, especially with that drill going up, going out, going down, right on the other person's head, or going out through impaling or whatever type of sick or gory type of fatalities that you can think of. I think Big Daddy would go along okay in that fashion. I agree. It would be cool. I mean, I think he would fit perfectly into that world, but it also depend on what are the physics, you know, Smash Brothers, the, the bigger characters with the bigger weapons move a lot slower. Big Daddies are big characters with big drill arms. So I'm sure like their damage would be amazing, but I don't think there would be much on dodging. But then you also, as a special move, you can summon out the girl with like a deranged teddy bear that you could throw at the opponent as well. Well, it'd be cool if she could inject them with the plasmas and she just over injects them and like their fatality could be like the eyes popping out or the head exploding or something. That's true. Good point. And then last but not least for me, I think this one's a natural. I mean, a lot of, I know in the video game world right now, it's kind of iffy, especially after his last major outing as far as what was expected of it. Duke Nukem. Just because of the fact, again, it goes back to what you would hear from Claptrap, Duke Nukem would provide a lot of profane but funny one-liners, and Gore is not too far behind from whatever he could do. Sustaining damage and giving out damage, you could just think very creatively along the lines of what you wanted to do with Duke Nukem. 
Yeah, I guess whatever makes him relevant again. He's kind of a dead property right now, so that'd be interesting to throw him back in there and then see, you know, again, like with Dead Space, see what kind of interest is garnered in that. But his thing would be interesting because I don't see him dealing big damage physically. I think most of his stuff would have to revolve around weaponry because that's always been his call to fame. You do know his most famous one-liner talking about He's going to rip out something and do something with the throat. I just can't say what right now because... Uh, you can use your imagination, listen. Yes, yes. You can use your imagination on what he would do, but especially with his most famous line as far as his comeback, as for when he goes ahead and kills the enemies in his own game, what he would do in the Mortal Kombat universe, especially in those fatalities. And actually, if you went along and specifically word for word pointed out his most famous line from there not the bubblegum one but the one where talking about poop and all that so right so if the listeners want to know what that line is they can go on youtube and make sure you listen to it with your mom too so um <laughs> no no don't no don't listen <laughs> no no don't listen to what he was saying no 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 let's not give anybody any ideas but it is something that we're interested in with mortal kombat 11 no, we don't think Shaggy's a good fit for Mortal Kombat 11, but we thought today we'd bring up some other good ideas as well. What are your thoughts out there on Mortal Kombat 11? Are you excited for the release? And do you actually think Shaggy should be a DLC character? And if not, what other characters from the video game world or wherever in pop culture would you like to see in Mortal Kombat 11? Share us your thoughts, popculturecosmos at yahoo.com. Also as well, Pop Culture Cosmos, Humanica Media, and Game Source on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well. My friend, it's been a great episode. Want to thank everybody for being a part of it and listening to our great program. We've got another great one coming up on Friday with Super Bowl predictions and a lot more coming along the way. Any last thoughts on the way out? I finished Iron-Blooded Orphans last night. And it was pretty dang good. So I do maybe on a future episode we'll talk about it because wow, that was that was an anime that packed a punch. I have not felt that emotional since Full Metal Alchemist. So we'll elaborate on that later. And you did talk about it a little bit beforehand when we were discussing as far as what was going on in the world of Gundam, which thanks so much to everybody out there. It's become our most popular episode of all time. So thank you so much for listening to that episode and all of our shows. But yes, you talked a little bit about that when it comes to Gundam. So if you want to delve back into it and talk more about it now that you've finished that story arc, I'd love to hear more about it at any point in time you can. So for Josh Peterson... This is Gerald Glassford. It's another beautiful day in paradise right here in the Pop Culture Cosmos. We thank you for listening. And here's hoping you have yourself a great day. <laughs>